Hey guys, welcome to the hacked existence demo of the DStyke Dauther wristband. So just up front, I am not associated with DStyke. I don't get kickbacks or anything like that. This is just a cool project that I saw on the internet. I picked one up, I liked it, so I thought I'd do a demo on it. You can pick one up at dstyke.com. They're about 35 bucks. Um, but before we get into the technicals, let's see this thing in action. So if I go to scan and I do scan AP and station, um, and just a quick note, this LED is stuck on green because I tried to disable it through the web interface, but apparently all I did was disable updates to it, so now it's stuck on green. But normally that NeoPixel LED would be changing color to tell you status of what's going on on the watch. So now that the scan is done, we will go back, we'll go down here to select, we will select a station, and I'm going to pick this Apple station here. I'll go back, back, go to attack. And I'll do a deauth. You can see there's one target that's been selected. It's that Apple station. So we'll click start. And what you'll see is this Wi Fi will get deauthed, reconnect, and deauth. You'll see it happen three times there quickly. And then it just stops trying to reconnect, just reverts back to LTE. That's an iPhone thing. An Android phone would continually keep trying to reconnect um, and not give up. So now we can stop this deauth attack now that we've kicked that phone off the network. Uh, we can launch a beacon attack. We could say there's eight SSIDs pre-programmed into it, and we can see them all fill in there. Uh, so that Rickroll comes pre-programmed. You can modify all these SSIDs over the serial connection or through the web interface, uh, but this is how it comes out of the box. So let's go ahead and stop that beacon attack. Um, another nice feature is that it comes with a packet monitor, so you can change the channel by using these up and down arrows here. So you can see on channel 12 there's nothing going on, 11 seems to have some traffic on it. It'll tell you how many packets per second along with a nice little graph of them. Uh, there's also a clock here, so something to note is that if you take this apart and look inside, the battery power is actually a small tiny little LiPo battery similar to what you put in a very small quadcopter. Um, and there is a power switch here. Every time you turn this watch off and back on, the time resets because there's no persistence of power. So you have to set the clock every time you turn the watch on, uh, which is totally worth it for a watch that can de-off things. Um, the last feature is an LED, so it's got a little flashlight built in there, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also an antenna port here. It came with two little external antennas, so you can plug in some external antennas if you want some more range. It's got a reset button here that restarts, typical Arduino fashion. The power switch, an up, down, and push button, and then two little push buttons over here. It charges through a standard Android plug, and you can use the Arduino serial monitor to interface with it over serial via the USB. It also has a buzzer here, but I haven't figured out how to get that thing working yet. All right, so one of the things I want to quickly address is the limitations of the ESP8266 chipset. So basically, this is a system on chip with a Wi-Fi radio. It's the predecessor to the more popular ESP32. Uh, and basically, the limitation here is that the 8266 can only support 2.4 gigahertz, which means you're not going to be able to de-auth any five gigahertz clients, you're not even gonna be able to see them. But for something like a cell phone that has a dual band wireless card, even if that's connected to a five gigahertz network that you're not able to de-auth, uh, you're still gonna be vulnerable to beacon attacks because it's still going to receive beacons on 2.4 gigahertz. So please keep in mind, this will only work with 2.4 gigahertz. Um, the only mitigation that I've seen to the de-auth attack is the 802.11w protocol. Uh, which gives you protected management frames. Basically, all that does is authenticates management frames like deauthentication frames between a client and the access point uh, after a trust relationship has been established. Um, but in reality, it's very rare to see 802.11w actually implemented. So for the most part, this thing's gonna work and do exactly what it claims to do uh, against any client on 2.4 gigahertz. All right, so in addition to being able to interact with the watch through the hardware on the watch itself, the watch also throws up an access point called Pwned with a default password of deauthor. You can change all that in the settings, but once you've connected to that access point, you can navigate to 192.168.4.1, and we'll click through the captive portal here. And now we can see the scan interface where we will see the results of the scans that are going on. You can go to SSIDs and configure your SSIDs for the beacon attack. 
on the attacks page. We can actually launch all the different attacks and read an explanation of what the attacks do. Um, so this is super useful if you're trying to be incognito. You can leave the watch stuck on the clock and launch the attacks on the watch from your phone, which is pretty neat. Uh, the settings page has quite an extensive list of settings you can modify. Um, so good stuff there. The info page has a bunch of info about the developers and the GitHub. Um, so the last thing I'll mention is in addition to the hardware interface and the web interface, you can also plug this into a computer and pull up the Arduino serial monitor to get a CLI interface onto the watch as it's up and running. In the next video, we will download the source code from GitHub and get an Arduino project running to flash the firmware from source code onto the watch. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.